Hey everybody, I am so glad you're here joining us live today with Kelly Russell. So really quick, we're going to do a little bit of our, um, what we got to do here to share on Facebook. So go ahead and share. Okay. Yep, there we are. Sharing. It's so cool to see yourselves on your own phone. <laughs> Bear with us one second here. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Gina Whitehouse and I am the creator and founder of YourMoreThanMom.com. And so every month we try to come to you and bring you a really awesome interview with someone where they just share their story about being a stay-at-home mom and also a work-at-home mom. And yeah, so today we are here with Kelly Russell. Hello. She is a freelance writer. Hey, Brooke, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Of course, Hi, Brooke. Brooke's here. Um, <laughs> she's a freelance writer, and mm -hmm. she's also a speaker, and she actually got started with just doing a blog. Mm -hmm. So at the end, um, maybe we'll take some questions about blogging and, you know, see if anybody has some questions for us to answer. So first, Kelly, why don't you just tell us about what you did before you were a mom, okay. or before you had kids? Awesome. Well, before I had kids, I got my master's at Denver Seminary in leadership, and I used that at a mega church in Orange County. I was the director of volunteer development, and I loved my job. I showed up every day just feeling like I was doing what I was meant to do. I was in my sweet spot, and I don't think a lot of people can say that. I think that's yeah. unique, and I knew that it was unique, and I was thankful for it. And then came the babies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I think we talked a little bit before we went live here. And it is a great thing when you're working and that you're doing something that you love. Because you don't actually feel like you're working, exactly. right? And you're doing something purposeful. And it's just hard to give it up. So tell me a little bit about that transition into mm -hmm. being a stay-at-home mom. Was it something that you always envisioned yourself doing? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that you were forced into? Yeah. Definitely the latter option there. Um, <laughs> I love my kids. I have a two-year-old little boy and a five-year-old little girl, and I just adore them. But when I became a mother, it was pretty pretty shocking. It was um, a tough transition to go from working and being a career woman to being a stay-at-home mom. It's not something I ever dreamed of or thought I would do. The plan was to go back and I got through my, is it okay? Oh, no, it's okay. Sorry, <laughs> okay. you know, we get these pop-ups sometimes. Okay, go ahead. I got through my 12 weeks of maternity leave, which is generous. That's a great maternity leave. And it just became apparent, I, there's no way I can go back. My little girl, my baby was sick a lot. She had all kinds of illnesses, nothing chronic. Some moms have it so much more heart-wrenching and harder than me, but she was a sick little baby over and over again. She was sick, and I remember just thinking, I could go back, but I'm not going to be able to take my kid to the child yeah. care that I have set up, and I had child care arranged at my job, so it was the perfect scenario to go back, but it just wasn't going to work. Yeah, it just didn't feel right, did mm -hmm. it? It didn't it's feel like... right. So, but it, it was a tough transition because I felt like I was giving up a lot. I felt like I was sacrificing a lot to stay home with her, even though it was the best decision for us. It wasn't a joyful, relieving, you know, I think some women are, are like, it's a relief to quit their job. And that was not my experience. It was heart-wrenching to quit my yeah. job. There were lots of tears. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. There were a ton of tears. So what happened after the year that you were home with her? So we had a, a wild year. It was, you know, ups and downs and joyful times and really rough times. And then we moved and we joined a new church. It was a small church plant, 200 people. And coming from my background of ministry, every time I sat in church, I thought, oh my gosh, I have to get in here. I have to get involved. This place is amazing. And there's so much we could do, and I want to do all of it. I want to do all of it right now, <laughs> full time. And I kind of rose my hand and said, hey, this is what I used to do in the past, and I'd love to help. And they swiped me up pretty quickly and said, yes, we, we want your help. We need your help. And I went and ran with that. I, I have to say it was not the church's fault at all whatsoever. They were so graceful and um, put it on me to be responsible about managing my, my own time and my own family. And I have to say I didn't do that well. 
That's just the truth. I didn't yeah. do it well. Um, it felt so glorious to be <laughs> back in in working and in ministry. This was not a paid position. It was volunteer. But it felt amazing to be using my brain, to be using my gifts and skills and talents that I had honed and spent a lot of time and money to, to get good at. And I was good at it. And I got pats on the back for being good at it, which you don't get a whole lot at, at home oh, when you're hard. a stay-at-home mom. You don't get a whole lot of, hey, a diaper change. You really got into all those crevices. Good job, <laughs> mom. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's a really thankless uh, job. Yeah. So to go into the staff oh. meeting and have people looking at you for ideas and, well, let's ask Kelly because... Kelly's the expert on that, and Kelly comes from a mega church, and she'll know. I mean, that that made me sit up straight. That made me feel pretty darn good after a year of mm -hmm. feeling in my pajamas every day. <laughs> you know, it was fun to get dressed up. It was fun to be on a team. I felt like I was back. Yeah. I felt like I was me, and I I ran with it. And it could be quite lonely being at home, mm -hmm. like you know, said you said being on a team. Um, yeah. You know, and I think even online, we can find different communities mm -hmm. and stuff to be part of. That's one of the pluses, I would say, about social media now. Absolutely. Except that it could be like a total distraction also <laughs> from getting things done that we need to get done. Um, but yeah, I mean, it could be lonely, especially that yeah. first year or two. Um, yeah, so I can absolutely identify with that. How would you say that it affected your home life? It, it got really bad. Um, it didn't start out bad. At first, my husband was just as excited as I was. He said, you know, yeah, you should do this. You're great at this, and they clearly need you. Do mm -hmm. this. And then the rub started when I just didn't have an off switch. I don't know what it is about me, but with this particular thing, I don't have an off switch. And I would work late into the night and wake up early, and I just kind of steamrolled my family. Honestly, I really did. There were things like I would host our welcome lunch, and there was one time, just heartbreaking, my little girl said, Mom, you know, what's for dinner? I'm hungry. What can I eat? And my husband, without skipping a beat, <laughs> said, Oh, honey, Mommy only feeds the people at church, not us. And I said, I mean, that just killed me, yeah. and it was true. If it wasn't true, it wouldn't have gotten to me like it did, but it was true. Our cupboards were bare. I was old Mother Hubbard with bare cupboards. <laughs> I hadn't had time to grocery shop. Well, it was yeah. a priority issue. I had it grocery shopped because I was doing things for the church, right. and as you can imagine, resentment built. My husband Absolutely. has a very intense job, too, and our lives take someone being at home. And, you know, he said, you're a stay-at-home mom for a reason, and you're not staying at home. And that was the truth. That was the honest truth. And that's a hard thing to hear. And a, a kind of a big ship to write. Because <laughs> I was yeah. committed to these things. But I had to uncommit myself. And I really did learn the hard way. My marriage was, it wasn't going to end well. If I had kept my course. Well, I think, especially for those of you who are watching who might find yourselves to be kind of similar to us, because I feel mm -hmm. like I can definitely connect with you, um, which I've shared with uh, many people who are watching here, or we also have a Facebook community group for those of mm -hmm. you who want to be with other like-minded women, um, which I've shared there is that I can be very one-track focused. Mm -hmm. So if there is something that I am working on, a project, um, I just throw everything into it, and, mm -hmm. and I'm just like looking at it like just like looking straight that way and I'm not looking to the right I'm not looking to the left you know I'm just doing whatever I have to do to get it done and I know what has helped me and I'm sure it's going to help other people who are listening is just to have someone in your life that's holding you accountable mm -hmm. you know it's good yeah to have your husband hold you accountable like definitely you want him mm -hmm. on it but find a friend that's outside of your family that can say you know it's close enough to you to be able to see okay, like you're forgetting to do these things, yeah. you know, and um, like I can think of one person right now that I talked to last week where she reminded me, you know, we're, we're, we maybe work at home moms when we have these skills and passions and things that we want to pursue, but at the end of the day, our 
first commitment is at our homes first, and we mm-hmm. got to get those things done. And if we don't get those things done, then we can't do the other things, right? right? And we it's almost so have to, like, <laughs> prove ourselves mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, you have to build that trust with your spouse, too, especially if they've seen you cross the line and become so over-focused mm-hmm. on something that we almost have to... It's like you take two steps backward. Now you have to build your trust and show them, okay, I'm going to set some boundaries in place so that you can pursue those things that God has put on your heart. So um, tell, tell me just a little bit more. So what af- what happened after you got so like heavily involved in volunteering at the new church you, where you were at? Like, What was that moment where you were just like, okay, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. How did God lead you to that decision to say, okay, I need to like step back, even though that's what you saw yourself mm-hmm. doing, but maybe there was a glimpse of something else yeah. that he gave you that was totally different and not what you would have thought you were supposed to be doing. But yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, first of all, my son had a mild birth defect that needed corrected. So he was going into surgery at 18 months old and it was clear as day to me that if I was distracted during this time, if I was sending emails and on the phone Mm -hmm. and working, then my husband was, he was at his wit's end already. And at this really tender, scary, stressful time for us, if I was distracted and if my head, I get a little emotional thinking about it, if my head wasn't completely in the game with my family at that time, I knew that would be a breaking point for us. Yeah. And um, so I, I almost didn't have a choice. <laughs> it made me realize this is my family or ministry. And I do not want to get the end to the end of this life and say, man, I, I did ministry. I, I, yeah. I reached all these people for Christ. I don't have a husband to show for it. <laughs> I don't have kids who respect me or care about me, but man, I did ministry. That's not winning to yeah. me. So that was a huge wake up call. Oh, I will get it together here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I mean, I truly believe that, you know, God doesn't let us go too far. Right. Right. He lets us get to the point where we realize where we're like broken, right? Mm-hmm. Where we were just so broken and he's like, okay, are you ready now for yeah. me to pick up the pieces mm-hmm. and put it all back together? Yeah. You know, and I think, I can think of times in my own life. I mean, just, you know, recently in the last year or two years where, you know, a lot of it was rooted in pride, right? Mm-hmm. We talked about this a little bit before we got on live here is that we can get so prideful that this is what we're supposed yeah. to do and this is my plan and this is what my how my life's supposed to go mm-hmm. when God actually has something absolutely mm-hmm. better but we're so focused just looking at ourselves, you know, that we don't see that abundance mm-hmm. that he has for us and sometimes we have to lay down our own ideas and our own pride to be able to say, okay, Lord, you need to change us. And so he lets us get to that point, mm-hmm. you know, where we're, we're finally like, okay, if I cross over this line, then things are going to be really yeah. bad. And so you got you you were able to see that you were mm-hmm. able you got to that line Absolutely. and you made the right choice, which was not to cross over because if you did that, you were going to be absolutely ineffective. Right. Right. Yeah. Once, you, once you don't have, you're working in ministry, things are bad with your, your husband. Family's... You get divorced. Everything. <laughs> you, you lose your credibility. Yeah. Right. And and not that you can't go into ministry right. again. It's just a whole other rebuilding process. And yeah. so. Good for you for getting to that line and saying, okay, no, I have to, I have to change and I have to listen to what God's telling me and listen to the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit's leading and make a decision. So Yeah, it's almost yeah. like we have a long leash until we don't. He yeah. loves us enough to be like, Absolutely. you know what, I've given you freedom. You're coming back. You're mine. This family's mine. Yeah. We're, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. That's exactly how it and was. That's why we can trust God because he's mm-hmm. our shepherd and we're the sheep. And he doesn't let his sheep go too far, and he pulls us back exactly. in with that thing, whatever it's called. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. The, the, the shepherd's long, hook. The, the shepherd's hook. That, that's just the exact picture that comes in my mind when you just no, said that. Like, that. like, you know, or like with the exactly. leash, he's like, come on, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the shepherd doesn't let the sheep go too far, so yeah. we can always trust in him, but we shouldn't be we shouldn't be pushing it. We shouldn't right. be pushing no. it to see how far we can go towards that line. So, no, not at all. Yeah. So there was a lot. I I had to ask myself, why is this so hard to give up? Yeah. And what you said, pride and identity, is what came to my mind. Hmm. This is you are getting too much pride and identity out of this role. And 
because of that, I'm going to take it away. And during that really refining time that wasn't easy nor fun, <laughs> um, I also heard this little glimmer of hope of maybe God has something else for you. And at the time, I didn't want something else. So I kind of batted that thought and idea away with a little bit of anger, you know, get, get out of here. I don't, I don't want anything different. This is what I want. Mm -hmm. Gosh darn it. Um, but it's just funny to look back now at what I'm doing. Number one, you, you can't try to build a platform and write and speak for God with pride. It's, it's going to wreck right. you. That's one thing I've learned. So I needed stripped of all pride, and I was. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going into this being, who am I if I don't work at, at this church? Well, we're going to figure it out together is what God said. And, and I'm going to strip you of all the pride before I rebuild you was basically it. And I'm so thankful yeah. because now what I'm doing is out of a really pure place. All I want to do is serve God. I want to write, speak, and lead women towards Christ. That is my mission. And I don't want to do that. I can't do that with an ounce of pride. Yeah. It's going to wreck the yeah. whole thing. So I'm thankful that I've been stripped of it. Right. And you get to be paid for it. Yeah. Which is awesome. Which, you know, you've got a business. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about how um, you manage that tension mm -hmm. between being a mom and having a business. Because we talked yeah. a little bit before about um, how do I put it into words? How you know, some people are totally fine being mm -hmm. a mom and taking care of the household and, and doing that. And that's what they're meant to do. There are some of us who um, know we're not meant to be in the working world like 100% mm -hmm. where we're away from the home. Right. But then there's this group of us who want to be at home, have the flexible hours, have a flexible schedule, yet still pursue those callings and passions that God yeah. has put on our hearts or the gifts and callings that he's given us, the skills and talents. Mm -hmm. So how do you manage that tension and find a balance. What, are, what would be your three top tips to give to these ladies who are listening right now? I would think the first one is just realizing that it always is going to be a tension, that that's not going away anytime soon. I'm always yeah. going to be a mom. Uh, Lord willing, I will always be a wife. So these people will always need the best of me. They're always going to need my first. They're always going to need just the best that I have to offer, not the crumbs, because I gave them the crumbs for a really long time and wondered why it wasn't good enough for them. <laughs> but just realizing this is a tension, and it's it's a perfectly fine tension, getting comfortable with it, and writing it whenever it gets off, because it still gets off course. I, you know, I could take this writing speaking thing and go haywire with it. <laughs> you could start traveling, traveling exactly. the entire United States. Or exactly. Go, I mean, you could be taken away from your family every single weekend right. and not even be connected into a church. I yes. mean, it could so just it'd absolutely like get there. Any other addiction, basically, we can we can uh, replace it with a whole host mm -hmm. of things. So just realizing this is a tension, it's not going anywhere. Accepting it and writing it when it gets off course, and it does get off course still. Another thing is just, I've gotten really, I've learned a lot, I'll say, about my own priorities. And I actually teach a workshop to moms about priorities and how our priorities should dictate every yes and no that we give to people. They really should. We should know our priorities. We should have four to six priorities that we know, like the back of our hands. And our days should be arranged around those priorities. And that's what that's I'm nice. seeking to do this year is I know my priorities. They start with my husband, well, God first, my husband, my kids. And after that comes any ministry and any business. And that is a hard list to get in that order. It, it, mm. the, the last couple that I mentioned try to sneak up all the yeah. time, all the time. And I just have to... I have to be aware of it and I have to write it. And um, the last thing is that it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take self-discipline. I've learned my word yes. for this year for 2017 was discipline. Because I knew going into this year it's going to take a lot of no's to, to fulfill this purpose mm -hmm. that I just shared. And it's going to take a lot of sacrifice. You know who's not going to be sacrificing those? My family. That's what's sacrificed in the past. 
Yeah. And that's not that's not an option now. So other things have been sacrificed. Staying up late to watch reality TV with a glass of wine or two or three. It doesn't happen these days. I don't have time for it. Um, I need to wake up feeling great. I, I wake up mm -hmm. at 5 a.m. And I'm not saying this to brag, but I am excited. This is something I've wanted to do yeah. all my life. I've heard of people doing, but I never had something that was worth. And now I bound out of bed. It's like, get me back to my writing space. Get me back into that area where I can just have time with God and I. I need it. I'm desperate for it. And when I don't get it, everything feels off. It's just the whole day is just like something's missing. And yeah. I have to protect that. It takes a lot of notes and a lot of sacrifices and a lot of self-discipline. Yeah. But I'm happy to do these days. That's good. It's worth it. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah. I love it. Very good. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it just goes back to what we were talking about, about how when you're doing something that you're passionate about, that God's laid on your heart, that's a gifting, you know, that right. you're happy doing it, you know? I mean, there are times when it could definitely, I'm, I can say from experience where you're like, okay, I'm tired, or like, mm -hmm. you know, you just want to maybe do something or else. deadlines are stressful. Yeah, I like mean, there's absolutely. something stressful. But, you know, it's something that has purpose behind it, and if we're going to be at home, we should be doing something with purpose, yeah. you know? And um, why drudge through our day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, especially if we're afforded the time to actually be at home and be right. able to it's, have the blessing to be with our kids. It's such a gift. Yeah. I have to remind myself that all the time. Like, it is not nice everyone to gets too. to do this. So, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I love what she said about trade-offs, um, or that's how the way the way I read it and, or listened to it in my mind was about trade-offs. You know, when you have a business at home, you have to choose. You know, are you going to, you know, binge-watch Netflix all day, or are you going to actually set aside that time for your business? You know, there's so many things that can distract us. Like, when I started my business five years ago, um, I got off Pinterest. Like, you know, it was just at, at night or during the day, just constantly scrolling, pinning, things like that. I stopped watching TV, and I was actually sharing before that I am... A little crazy in the way where I'm the opposite of most people where I actually have to schedule in TV time just to make sure that I sit down and I clear my mind um, because I just don't watch TV anymore. Even my daughter said yesterday, she goes, you never watch TV. I'm like, oh, look, you noticed. I don't ever watch TV. It's hardly when ever. other people notice. Yeah, especially when your kid's in, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like they notice a good thing and not like a mom, you're always on your phone, get off your phone yeah. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So let me see what, how much time we have left here. Okay, we have about, oh, about like 20 more minutes. So, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you just started doing what you're doing now, and then we can open up any questions. If there's anybody here who has some questions about blogging, writing, how to start, um, yeah. let me see. Yeah. Okay. Get them to us. We'd love to hear your questions. Well, the way I got started with this new endeavor of writing and speaking is that I took the break of when my little boy had surgery. I took that break. And I gotta say, it was a good couple of months. My house ran very smoothly. Everyone was very happy, and I realized, you know, I'm actually pretty, I never felt good at being a stay-at-home mom. I felt like I was really bad at it, but it's because I had never fully focused on it. Yeah. <laughs> I realized, oh, I'm actually pretty good at this when I give attention to it. So that was a good finding. But I became restless. I, I, I realized, okay, my house and my home and my family do have to have a higher priority in my life. But I don't think it's ever going to be everything. I, yeah. I've been given these gifts and skills and talents, and I want to use them, and I long to use them, and I don't feel right or alive when I'm not using them. So this restlessness came in, and I started hearing a little whisper of, right write. Mm -hmm. You need to start writing. And I've always enjoyed writing, but I've never put it. Looking back, I, I've always loved writing. I mean, I craft emails. I take hours crafting my emails at work. So it's funny to look back and see these different hints that I've always been a writer. But I started actually putting some time and effort into it. I started getting a plan. I read everything I could about writing and all of a sudden it was a theme, just writing was everywhere and I, I, it became a passion. I just started eating it up yeah. and couldn't get enough of learning about how to write. I took workshops and then I started a blog. Uh, that was in June of this year and by August an editor of a magazine 
contacted me and said, hey, I've been reading your blog. I only had about five posts at this point. She said, I've enjoyed it. I think you're a fabulous writer. Would you consider writing for my magazine? And that was a pinch me moment. I mean, this does not happen. Yeah. People blog for years upon years and never get anything published. And I couldn't believe this was happening. I was over the moon about it. And I went with it. I said, yes, it was a, it was one of those, I will figure it out later. She said, pitch me a couple ideas. I'm Googling, pitching an editor of a magazine ideas. What does that even mean? But I did. I pitched her five ideas. She wanted three. And it, it hasn't even been a year yet. That was last August. Awesome. So it's it's been about nine months. And it's been the time of my life. It has been so exciting, cool. and I've learned so much. Oh, my goodness. I've learned a ton, and, and I've been published in other publications since then, and I am hoping to write a book. I'm working on a proposal for that. So cool. those a couple articles have uh, led to speaking engagement. So I'm in Toastmasters. I'm just in the – I'm like, give, give me everything. Yeah. I know we're supposed to say no to things. I'm kind of in a yes. Mm -hmm. time right now where it's like if you throw an opportunity at me I'm probably going to try to make a way to, to make it work and learn how to do it <laughs> perhaps on the fly because it's just it's that season for me where I'm getting started it's happening faster than I thought it would but I'm going with yeah. it because these things don't happen yeah. every day you can't be like hey can I get back to you in a couple of years when life slows down and then could I write for your magazine <laughs> like it doesn't really work that way so I'm going with it. Yeah. As long as you schedule that time. Right. Right? So it doesn't mm -hmm. come in front of your family. Exactly. Um, why don't you share a little bit about, um, one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, well, I'm like totally forgetting now. <laughs> There's something we talked about um, right before we hopped on about blogging. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. About, okay, you're a writer. Let's mm -hmm. say you've only written five blog posts. Mm -hmm. Be okay with saying you're a writer. Yes. Yes. Right? Calling myself a writer made me a writer. I, I will say that over and over again. Calling myself a speaker made me a speaker. When you're a writer, you have to write your own bio at the end of your article. And I will tell you, I wrote, Kelly Russell is a writer and a speaker, blah, 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 blah. I took out the speaker part about 50 times before I finally left it in and pressed send and thought, you know what? I, I speak. <laughs> I'm speaking right now. I speak. And it has manifested itself into speaking engagements. Now I have been paid to speak. So there, there were a couple of weeks in there where, yes, I called myself a speaker. I've spoken in the past. My different volunteer opportunities and jobs have required me to speak. So I'm a speaker. But now I am a speaker speaker. I'm a paid speaker. So it, it's That's cool. There's something there where it's, hey, whatever you want to do, I'm not talking about being this master BSer. I'm not. It's yeah. not about that. It's putting yourself out there, even when it feels a little scary. And people don't need to know what you're paid for. If you've done your thing at any capacity, mm -hmm. then you've done your thing and say that you're that thing, whatever it is. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting no, fired up. It's very encouraging. <laughs> well, I tell this to people all the time, you know, like, Walk, you know, walk in confidence into mm -hmm. your calling, you know, yeah. and if you want to be a speaker and you already speak to people daily, right. say you're a speaker and put it out there, you know, um, and it, it's going to happen. Right. You know, you have to just be confident in the God, the things that God has put on your heart. Sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't happen as fast. Right. You know, sometimes right. it's, it's a lot longer, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to be patient and follow the Holy Spirit's leading, um, Every opportunity that comes your way, you know, you don't have to take every opportunity, but weigh it against your priorities and see if it's this is the right season that it's going to fit in right mm -hmm. now. And for you, it just it came together. Yeah, it really you did. Know? So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, too, you have to be committed to improving yourself. So I can't just say I'm a speaker and then have people yeah. pay me to be a speaker right. and be kind of so-so at that. It's like I'm at Toastmasters every week, and when I'm not there, I'm studying and and reading about being a speaker and watching TED Talks on being a speaker. Mm, good, it, you yeah. know, it's like we do have to offer something once we call ourselves something. 
So I can't call myself a writer mm -hmm. and then write whenever the house is quiet and I feel like it. No, I call myself a writer. So I'm up 5 a.m. every day writing and then I have something to offer people. And then I'm a quality writer who gets paid to write. It's it's all very yeah. intertwined. Yeah, and you have to personally um, develop yourself. You have yeah. to personally um, invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've come, across, I, I've come across this a lot where, you know, people want to start a business from home, yet they don't want to invest any money either into starting their business or into investing in themselves. Yep. And you got to spend you money to make money, you right? Have, you have to. And I'm not talking you have to, like, invest thousands of dollars. Right. I mean, no. Toastmasters isn't free. Oh, it's no, like, there's like a paid membership, 60 bucks a quarter. It's yeah, not, not that big of a deal, no. you know? Or, like, for instance, I'm teaching right now an online course for four weeks. It's a time management course. And, yeah, sometimes you have to personally invest and pay the money to mm -hmm. take a time management course so that you actually hold yourself accountable. Um one of my other businesses is where I um, work as a health and fitness coach, and I always find that when people don't invest the money into the workout program they're going to do or buying the food they need or whatever, if it's just give it to them, yeah. they, they absolutely oh, yeah. fail at it because they didn't invest anything in themselves to improve. Yeah. You know, so we can't just think that these things are just going to happen overnight without mm -hmm. actually investing a little bit in ourselves. Because I, I, I read a statistic, uh, a statistic um, <laughs> over the last couple of years that... Um, usually whatever you put into personally investing in yourself, you get 10 times back, uh, you know, I can so see that. the money that you put in going to Toastmasters mm -hmm. or any other things, you get it back. You, you're a paid speaker yeah. now, yeah. you know, so you might be having to put something in up front and it might hurt in the wallet a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, but eventually it's going to come back to you as long as you're diligent and you're patient. Yeah. Absolutely. I've happen. done the same thing with writer's workshops where they've, they've cost a pretty penny mm -hmm. and I've had to you know, go to my husband and be like, hey, so could right. I take this? Can I have but, this for my birthday? Yeah, exactly. I've done that. Yeah, I've done it. Absolutely. But it's completely worth it. I mean, I am not the writer. I can't believe this gal took the chance on me. Yeah. I, I mean, I... That's oh, all you, you guys. It's a god thing. Oh, I read <laughs> my... There's a couple blog posts that I would like to get published, so I've gone back to them. And, I mean, it's again, it hasn't even been nine months, but I read them, and I think... Oh, oh my, these are not good. <laughs> yeah. So it's fun. It's fun to get better at things and mm -hmm. to feel the confidence of, okay, I'm improving. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's great fun. So does anybody have any questions? We'll just hang around for one more minute. There's about mm -hmm. a 10 second delay. Um, so if you post a question, you'll have to wait for us to see it. So we'll just mm -hmm. see here. Um, and if you have any questions, even after this is over, you can always post in the comment below and see. Let's see if we got anything. That's good. That's good. <laughs> A sweet comment. Yeah. Thank you, Denise. That's so sweet. Let me grab my... Let me look at my computer real yeah. quick. I'll leave you here Let us know if you have any questions. Any bloggers out there? Any aspiring writers I would love to hear from you All right. any new mamas nursing their babies <laughs> yeah can any of you guys like totally relate to anything we've said today mm -hmm. hopefully has it encouraged you if it's encouraged you let us know um, yeah well since we're waiting a few minutes I should just talk a little bit about you more than mom.com yeah. so you are more than mom.com. We have a twofold um, mission. And the first is just to help those of you who are, uh, who have come from the professional world where you had a career and now you're a stay at home mom. You've made the choice, you made the decision, or like in Kelly's choice mm -hmm. or uh, situation, you've been forced into it. So um, we're here to just help you transition well. Mm -hmm. And I know as someone who used to work in the professional world that it can be very hard when you have gone to years of college to work and then you decide to have a family and you want to be a stay-at-home mom and then you feel like there's something missing. Mm -hmm. So we're here to support you. Um, the second mission of YouAreMoreThanMom.com is to show those of you who do have maybe a unique calling or gifting, skills, talents, things that you used to work while, you, you know, things that you used to use while you were working. We're here to show you how you can actually create a business at home for yourself but keep your family first, right? Because mm -hmm. any of us can start a business from home and become so overwhelmed mm -hmm. where we are now ineffective moms, right. ineffective wives, and that's not the reason why we chose to be stay-at-home moms, was not mm -hmm. to work 80 hours a week. <laughs> so um, 
so yeah, so check out the website, www.youaremorethanmom.com. We have a community group on Facebook that you can join um, where we have other women, other women who are just like us, like-minded women who are there to support one another. Um, we do uh, weekly Facebook Live videos. We try to make it fun by posting different things and just getting to know each other. And just so you know that you are not alone, mm -hmm. We, if you go to the website, you'll see that there are other more than mom interviews that are centered around different topics. Um, we also have different kinds of series and trainings, training videos there. Um, part of you are more than mom.com. We offer business coaching. So um, there's individual coaching that you can do with me or there's group coaching that we have. Like right now we have our take back your time, time management group that's going on that we are planning to hopefully offer again in the fall. So if you'd like more information about that, Definitely email us, um, comment below. You can email us at admin at youaremorethanmom.com. And if you're a mom who you are at home right now, stay at home mom, and maybe you have some business ideas or you have, you know you have these unique gifts and skills, you just don't know how to even turn it into a business or how to formulate a business idea, you can download for free at www.uniquelyyouworkbook.com. You can get our Uniquely You Workbook. It's actually a 20 page workbook and it will take you through a series of questions and then at, at the end there's a brainstorming exercise that you can go through where once you finish the workbook that you'll have one to two maybe three solid business ideas that you can pursue and so in our Facebook community group that's a place where you can post about that chat get our input and so on so there's so much available and the community just keeps growing um, we're going to be offering more different um, classes e-courses and e-courses and things like that in the future. I can't say too much right now because it's in the works. So yeah, well, we don't have any questions right now, but I know some are going to come up over the next week or even the next few months. So yeah. Kelly, just thank you so much. Thank and you. this is the first time we've done it through Facebook Live and I've actually Super done fun. it. Yeah, I've done it at my house. This is the first time we've done it together where um, we actually have the pleasure of living close to each other yeah. where other people I've interviewed live all around the United States. Um, so usually we do it in that format, but it's been so fun like yeah. getting together and doing it in person. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everybody. I we'll hope this was, has absolutely blessed you. And please leave an encouraging note for Kelly if, if she blessed you with sharing <laughs> her story. All right, everybody. We'll Bye.